These FrameForge video tutorials take you step-by-step step through the basic functions and the special features of FrameForge Previs Studio, the groundbreaking pre-visualization and storyboarding software. With FrameForge Previs, you can easily build your sets. Real-time lighting with multiple light sources that combine in color and intensity and throw multiple shadows are at your fingertips. You can block your shot, set your camera, set your lens, you can even edit your sequence. You can bring in your actors and customize them to the vision that you have in mind. FrameForge is the most efficient and affordable way to communicate your vision from the page to the screen. Hi, and welcome back. This is Chris, and it's episode three in our series on how to use FrameForge Previs Studio. We're gonna be talking about adding those final components to your set. Now, in previous tutorials, I've talked about what I consider to be the four components of a set in FrameForge Previs. We've already covered the first two, so let's go ahead and go over dressing elements, which is props, and of course, actors. Let's jump right into actors. Actors are accessible via the Actors tab located on the right side of the application. There are male and female models, children, teenagers, and adults, of course, four different races, and if you purchased any of the expansion packs, you're gonna find those right here as well. I'm talking about the crime and justice, emergency response, the military, and so on. Now we also have animals such as pets, livestock, wild animals, and for some reason, this guy. Props are located underneath the Props tab, aptly enough, which is right next to the Actors tab. There are thousands of different items, both for interior and exterior sets. There's a search field which automatically displays results below it, and if you purchased expansion packs, those items will be located here as well. Now it'd be a huge waste of my time and yours listing all the different items available within the props library. Between the props that are installed, the expansion packs, the user created items which are available for free in our online community, plus the object import functionality which we'll cover later, I'm confident you'll be able to find that object that you need. So now that you know how to find that actor or object that you need, how do you get them onto your set? Well, it's pretty simple. First, you need to locate that actor, object, or prop that you need. In this case, uh, an actor, an adult white male. How about this guy? Seems simple enough, right? Just click and drag with your mouse right onto the set. Boom. There he is. There you go. That's how you add an actor or an object to your set. You might have noticed earlier that I was in blueprint view when I added that actor. You can do the same thing with a camera view live. Simply locate the actor or prop that you're looking for and drag him directly onto the set. The process is exactly the same. Now regarding props, the process here is also exactly the same. First step is to locate the item that you want. In this case, uh, this guy looks like a biker, so let's add a, uh, let's add a motorcycle. Blue's his color, yeah, it goes beautiful with your eyes. Drag right onto the set and there you go. Oh really? Yeah really. There is a problem however, and this might have already occurred to you. All the objects are going to look exactly the same. We need to make them unique, so enter the green room. You're going to spend a lot of time in the green room, my friends. It's that functionality within FrameForge that allows you to apply kind of a custom and unique look to an actor or a prop. I'm talking about things like clothing, clothing colors, hairstyles, hair colors, age, body type, uh, facial expressions, and so on. Loading an actor object into the green room is a straightforward affair. Simply highlight the actor and go to the Tools drop-down menu and select Pose in Green Room. Or you can do like I do and simply double click the actor. The green room loads the actor or prop into the object viewing slash manipulation area. Nice name, right? There are numerous tools that allow you to rotate and scroll, zoom to rectangle, uh, and then zoom in and out in order to get a better look at the actor or prop you're manipulating. To the right of the object viewing area are a series tabs, the first one being actor's look. This dialog provides tools for changing every aspect of an object's appearance except for posing parts and applying or changing colors and textures. In the case of an actor, that means changing their clothes. 
So we're going to do something different. We're going to change this uh, mild-mannered businessman into something entirely different. Uh, let's get rid of that. Yeah, no slacks needed. We need to ditch that tie. And uh, let's make a few other changes. Okay, I got his clothes the way I want them. Let's go to the morphs and expressions functionality options. And let's change him from buff to fat. And let's also do the same with his facial type. Yeah, looking better already, buddy. All right, now I want to put some years on this guy. So uh, let's not call him old. Let's call him experienced. All right, now we got to slap a smile on this guy's face. We'll bring up the expression editor, and you can see these presets right here. I like to use a combination of them. Uh, Excited looks good. Then we'll go to the expression builder and we'll look at individual options. In the case of this guy, I'm thinking something like a big ah. Uh, yeah, let's slide it out there. Hmm. Looking good. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. All right, apply. All right, we've exhausted actor's look, so let's go to the posing tab. The posing menu contains the tools for altering the positions of hinged or jointed parts on objects that contain such parts. This drop down contains every joint within the actor's body from the neck down to their little toe. Uh, you can use the sliders beneath that drop down, but I prefer to use these control jacks to orient the limb and those three axes. Once you have a limb in the position that you like, you can even mirror the opposite limb using this button. In addition to manually posing each limb, you can use stored poses. I'm going to use one under the action category I had created previously and then use the slider to dictate how much of that pose you want to uh, put into effect. Yeah, this is coming along nicely. I'm starting to like it. Of course, once you've applied a stored pose, that's not to say you can't further customize it like this. You can even save this pose for future use using the stored pose functionality. You'll need to click a circle on this image to record which bone should be part of the pose You'll also want to give it a name and place it into a specific category. I'm going to choose the action category in the name Rocking Out. Click Apply twice and you're back to the camera view. You can see how this is put into effect by dragging another actor object onto the set, loading him into the green room, going to the posing tab, and then applying that pose that you just created. In this case, action and rocking out. Use the slider, then click Apply. Both actors now have the same exact pose. Mm, starting to look like a party. Let's ditch the extra actor and then reload our original actor back into the green room. Once there, go to the Colors, Textures, and State tab. Here you can change other properties of an object, including showing or hiding optional parts and altering colors and textures. For example, in this case, I changed the actor's hair color from a dark to this salt and pepper gray. I might have zipped through it pretty quick, so I'll show you one more time by changing the color of the jeans he's wearing. The process is very straightforward. I would simply select that item on the actor object that I wish to change, uh, such as their jeans. Once I've selected it, I'll click the Apply Texture button. Doing that will open up a file window that allows me to choose the texture I want, in this case, Black Fringed. Click Open, and the color is applied. To further customize your actor, you can apply a decal to skin or clothing. First select the item of clothing that you wish to apply the decal to, and then click the Apply Edit Decal button right here. When this menu, which depicts the item of clothing you're going to apply the decal to, appears, click on the Choose Decal button. A File Explorer window will appear that allows you to choose that decal you had in mind. I went into the clothing directory and the t-shirt logos directory and chose this one. Drag it into the position you had in mind and then click apply. This guy is just looking better and better all the time. So good in fact that I'd like to store him as a virtual character. To do so, reload the actor into the green room and go to the colors, textures, and states tab. Here you'll find the stores a virtual character functionality. You need to assign a name to this guy and then click Store Character. The application will give you a confirmation message saying it was saved and allow you the option to actually upload this to our online community to share with others. Alright, that's quite a change from how he originally looked. 
You may not know this, but this is actually Ozzy Osbourne's cousin, uh, cousin Eddie Osbourne. Now, you probably want to use this character again in the future, otherwise why would you have saved him and his pose? Locating him is easy enough. He'll be under the Characters category of the Actors tab. He's right there, but he doesn't have the same pose. You'll need to load him into the green room, and then go to the Posing tab. And then under Stored Poses, you'll need to locate the specific one, select it, use the slider to put it into effect, and click Apply. There you go. He's back. Hmm. How best to use this guy? <laughs> Alright, let's recap. We talked about how to locate actors and props and add them to your set as well as how to use the green room to make them unique. We only had time to cover the basics, so please take a look at the manual. Here are some chapter pages that are relevant to the topic we discussed. In the next tutorial, we'll be talking about taking shots and using the shot manager. So until then, peace out!